Welcome to Yogi Views, where my guest is yoga itself, through interviewing those who practice it, teach it, sell it, or simply love it. I am Antonio Sousis. This is the second part of a two-part show where I'm featuring Self-Realization Fellowship. Now, one of, of Yogananda's quests was to I would like to say reduce, uh, but perhaps deal, uh, to start with, with suffering. Suffering both in a spiritual plane, in a, as, as, a, as mental uh, inharmonies, or as physical disease. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely shared with uh, a lot of other masters and with a lot of human beings. Of course, we don't like to suffer, so we would like to do things that would help us not suffer. How did he propose to do that? Was Kriya Yoga the only way? Was the way? What, how, what did he say about that? Following the laws of life, is, again, goes back to Yama Yina, mm -hmm. Yama, mm -hmm. because a lot of the... Yogananda once said, he said, the breaking of the Ten Commandments is the cause of most suffering mm -hmm. in the world. So there, these laws are so mm -hmm. subtle. It's not, again, it's not trying to get, bring in the idea of sin, but there's cause and effect. And those laws, we get results from, from, the, from what we've sown. Mm -hmm. Also, suffering is a pain is a prod, they say. Um, this is not our home. We heard it, we're here to evolve spiritually. We're here to go back to our, our, our source. And so when we get suffering, it wakes us up that this is, not my, this is not our home. I am not for this place. Mm -hmm. I am the soul. Mm -hmm. and, and it's an important part of it. But there's more to suffering because what is actually suffering? It's the ego. Mm -hmm. yes. And where is the suffering coming from? Mm -hmm. It's coming from identification uh, with the body, identification with the world around us. That is where, that's the, uh, where it's coming from. And that is a process that is reversed in meditation because in meditation we begin over a period of time to realize that we are not the environment, that we are not the world, that we are not this physical body that, yes, will hurt, that has its problems, it gets old and everything, but we are the soul. And that the soul is ever perfect, ever joyous. And the more we learn to identify ourselves with that inner uh, peace, with that light of God, with the soul, the more we are able to have a distance to the suffering or to the things that we are simply going to have to go through in this world in order to learn uh, who we truly are. Because as Martin said, suffering is a part to teach us, but mm -hmm. to teach us what? Again, that we are not this world, that we are not this body. We are the soul. That's what it's all about. And that is actually the purpose of life. That's why we are here, to find God. But how did he address suffering? How did he propose to deal with suffering? Because as much as I hear you saying we're not the body, when you have a toothache, it's very hard to sit and meditate. You need a dentist <laughs> or you need and to do something with it. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what Yogananda says. You take care of the body, mm -hmm. but you don't become fixated on it. Uh -huh. Non-attachment. That is the key. Non-attachment. You do the thing, you see the things that are happening, you deal with them as best as you can, but you are not attached to them. That gives you that distance. Makes life a lot easier. Doesn't mean that uh, you don't care. Once you get Not there, it once makes you the life <coughs> easier. <coughs> because we live in a, in, a, in a world of attachment. Oh. The, West, the Western world has glorified attachment, yes, making, making it the same, <laughs> equal to love. Yeah. Love and attachment are the same for the Western world. So how do we get there? How, how, how do we... That is where meditation comes in. It always comes to back to that. Meditation is that process that turns the searchlight around and focuses inward. There is the happiness. Everything we are looking for, we find inside if we are able to discover it. Yeah. 
My, my spiritual master mm -hmm. says, the fish is thirsty in the water. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. us. That's Thirst, exactly Thirsty that. fishes <laughs> <That's exactly laughs> in the water. Um, Yogananda formed this um, Self-Realization Fellowship, this organization. Tell, tell me about this organization. In this modern time, it would be ideal, of course, if everybody had his own guru, but uh, there are not that many self-realized masters around that everybody can have his own guru. So Yogananda started the organization to disseminate the teachings through lessons, that is a home study course uh, that is sent, they are sent home on a bi-weekly basis and that's how you learn to meditate and you learn more of that because Kriya Yoga is not just meditation and some techniques, Kriya Yoga is a way of life. As we said, it starts out on Patanjali's Eightfold Path with Yama and Niyama, with right behavior and the things we should not do. And so in his lessons, he really touches on all aspects of life, from marriage to raising children, how to deal with suffering. Everything is in there, how to behave rightly at the workplace and how to find your true vocation in life. All these things are covered in the lessons. And in order to disseminate the lessons, there needs to be an organization. And that's why he founded Self-Realization Fellowship. What is the relationship with the Yogoda uh, in India? That's actually our Self-Realization Fellowship and Yogoda Satsanga Society are the same. The, the only same. thing is Yogoda Satsanga Society uh, acts in India and here in the West is Self-Realization Fellowship. Actually, uh, Yogananda started to found uh, Yogoda Satsanga Society in 1917, already in Ranchi in India, mm -hmm. where he had a boys' school. And yes. then he came over in 1920 as a delegate to the Congress of Religious Liberals in Boston. And he stayed then till uh, his passing in 1952 here in America with one sort of interruption in 35, 36 when he went back uh, to India. Mm -hmm. So they are both the same. <coughs> mm -hmm. Another big part of the uh, self realization mm -hmm. fellowship is we have meditation groups and centers. Uh, around the world, many thousands, uh, even small little people, uh, five, six devotees that meet in a home, yogis, and uh, they have regular meditations and they're uh, throughout the uh, United States and the world. So that's a big part of Yogananda. He didn't want necessarily a monastic order to be the centerpiece of Self-Realization Fellowship because this is for the world and it's for people in meditating in their homes throughout the world. And so, and so what is, let's say, what is the difference between the monastic order and a regular devotee or practitioner? Nothing really except that we have taken vows and are dedicated our lives to work and to serve uh, the organization and to, 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 to help it. So, but the practice of yoga and everything else about the teachings are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Now, you were, you were uh, mm, uh, uh, mentioning the boys' uh, school that he uh, opened and then somehow was, if I'm not uh, wrong, the, the, his first um, outreach <laughs> program, mm -hmm. let's say. Um, yoga for thousands of years was for men only. Ever since coming to the West, his head sprouted and women are practicing now to the point that an, uh, 80% of uh, the yoga practitioners in the West are women. Why do you think this happened? In uh, India, yoga has always been practiced by women as well. There are many women saints uh, that Yogananda writes about in the outer biography mm -hmm. of a yogi. And uh, there is no difference between uh, uh, the gender, uh, it's nothing not just for men or women. So it is not, but it happened that here is regarded as a girly thing. <laughs> How, I mean, I'm, I'm of, yeah. of course I'm not in agreement and I want... I want <laughs> Might be that the girl back. had a little bit more time. <laughs> just that, you think it's about yeah. time. I don't know. I really never thought about that, I have to uh -huh. say. Was this in, in talking about Ashnas? Again. Yes, and, but yes, mm -hmm. yes, and in general, because it, as, as it is known, which is mainly through asanas, mm -hmm. 
you go to a yoga class and it's 80% is women. And a lot of men feel uh, strange about going to a class. Mm. They, eh, mm. they, and most think, ah, that's for women. Mm. Of course it's not. But yeah. I wonder, you know, this is a question I've asked many of my, my guests. <laughs> Why is, had this happened? <laughs> Never thought about it. But no. you're too, that's right. I mean, I think our membership is uh, more than 50% women too, yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm just looking at the congregation here in Berkeley. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, the majority are women. And do you, do you, is it difficult for you or, or, uh, or not to introduce these ideas about spirituality and main spirit and associate clearly as you're doing the divine with yoga and uh, the spirit and all this? Because... Uh, a lot of people are resistant to this. How do you deal with it? I mean, everybody is looking for fulfillment in life. Everybody wants happiness. And the yoga definition of God is eternal, ever-existing, new joy or bliss. That is the definition of God given in the Hindu scripture. That's exactly what everybody is looking for. The only thing is, here in the West, we have been so accustomed and so conditioned, I really want to say, to look for it outside in the things of this world, new gadgets, this and that, instead of going inside and trying to find that supreme happiness within ourselves. Mm. But, but th this is why my, my question, mm. because uh, in my personal mm. experience, when I first moved to the States mm. and I was teaching and talking about spirit, people would yell from the back of the, ro the, <laughs> the room, asana, when are you starting with the asana? We came here for yoga. Mm. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it uh, still happens today. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's just how we begin. Everybody uh, comes on the spiritual path in his own way. We don't start out right away with the highest uh, techniques of uh, uh, pranayama control, life force control. We start out nibbling here a little bit, nibbling there a little bit. And yes, the physical yoga has its a part and that's how many start out. And then actually, specifically, when they uh, practice a dead man's pose, savasana, if you do it right, there is a certain withdrawal of the energy from the senses and you actually feel a certain peacefulness in that dead man's pose, or Savasha as it's called. And I know quite a number of uh, members who uh, said, that actually made me going, I want more of that, what can I do? And they start to research. I so like to, oh, excuse me. it's a perfect introduction yes. today. Yes, I see. I always like to call it the self. You know, forget about God, it's about the self because this Tornori Tranders has written this book called The I and the uh, User Illusion. And he said that there's, there's an I and there's a me. The me is the ego. That's who I'm identified right now. It's the lowest intelligent bandwidth <laughs> in the human. The, the I is running the body. Who's digesting the food? Who's thinking the thoughts? There's an obviously there's an intelligence that's incredible. And science has gone back and, sh and measured how much we're consciously doing. It's a tiny, tiny little bit. There's an enormous intelligence within us. Well, when you meditate, you're, you're, what you're doing is you're giving the me a time out. You're putting it in the corner and telling it to watch the breath. When it does that, something else comes forward, a different intelligence. And that manifests as in the same qualities as God. Joy, bliss, wisdom, and you don't, it can be God or not God. You can call it the I. And this is the age, what? This is the age of the I. This is the age of the individual. Times man of the year in 2006 was you. And this is perfect for this particular time. It, you, we, but it's a razor's edge. You either, go, you either become narcissistic with our devices and everything and go into technology and actually shut yourself off from everything. Or you go inside to the real you and then there's expansion and a fulfillment and it has nothing to do with God. Mm -hmm. But it, it's it's you know it's evolution, and it's what, what it, you know everyone really needs. Uh, now that you mention it, uh, social media is uh, quite important in in our days. Uh, you guys have a very good, nice website, and with <coughs> videos and music and uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, sound bites and uh, teachings and uh, a lot of information. 
do you think that social media, how do you think that social media and yoga can or do interact? And I'm, I'm referring mm -hmm. also to the fact that a lot of people now pay a few dollars mm -hmm. for a membership mm -hmm. to a certain website and they look some, at, at some classes and they do the classes <coughs> in, the, in their living room. Well, so it's a, it's, a, it's a way of practice or, or, or having access to yoga. Do you think it's okay? Do you think it has some future? Do you think, how, how does it integrate with this distraction that on the other hand social media mm -hmm. is as well? I think it's just like anything else, it depends upon how it's used. Um, yoga, meditation itself is, I look at it as a piece of social media, it's like an iPad. It's like you're, you're, it's a portable church, you know? The days of the church are kind of gone because people just don't, why would I go there, you know? And so what they do is you, can have, your, you have your church where you are. Mm -hmm. You sit down, you meditate, you create, a, you, know, you create your own spirituality, so it's very, it's, all, it's very in tune with this idea of uh, everything portable, everything you, uh, is part of you. So mm -hmm. uh, that's the way I see mm -hmm. it. And perhaps also with the idea of connection, mm -hmm. because actually mm -hmm. the main aim of social media is connection. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is also what Yogananda was talking about, connection with, uh, the, with the spirit, connection with God or with the eye inside, but also connection with others. We have a worldwide prayer mm. circle, which is amazing. Yogananda founded this, and it was a very important part of Self-Realization Fellowship, where we pray for others uh, mm. twice a day, and, ah. and the world. And in the whole world? In the whole world. At the same time? At the same time. And devotees throughout in our mm -hmm. meditation groups uh, uh, join in on this. So we're, you know, we're all connected through our consciousness and our thoughts. And science has been investigating this and finding you know, prayer works so, you know, the thoughts definitely affect outcomes in people's lives, and this prayer circle is part of that. There has been a, 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 an increasing movement of science towards yoga in different ways, either na namely yoga or not, but addressing the union of all existing things and the interconnectedness of all existing things, and it is in the macrocosmos as it is in the microcosmos, and uh, so, what do you think, and Yogananda said, this is the science of yoga. What do you think is the most important concept that yoga has for science? Experience mm -hmm. that, that you, go by, you go by results. You go by experience, you don't go by belief, you don't go by something somebody else said, you got to go by your own interior experience and meditation. And that's how, that's what, self-realization, that's the, that's becomes your, that's the science of meditation is this really bridges science and religion through experience. Yogananda was always doubting. He, when he would go to a saint and the saint would do a miracle, he'd say, I don't believe that. How can I tell? You know, he had his own experiences and he would say, he would say, uh, this, maybe this is auto-suggestion. And so he would, mm -hmm. he would just, he was relentless in his skepticism until he really knew because he realized that this, this whole age has been dominated by this belief which can be extremely destructive. People hold be untested beliefs, they'll kill others because of that. And yep. yeah, so experience is really the only way. That's the base of war. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. It's interesting uh, on the other hand that a lot of um, yoga techniques are being introduced to the militars to precisely change the nature of their experience with post-traumatic stress disorder, for example, and how meditation and guided imagery and deep relaxation can help individuals that uh, have developed this uh, syndrome. Um, what are some of the activities? You were mentioning the prayer circle and um, uh, small groups of people. What are some of the activities of the Self-Realization Fellowship as an organization, some of the offerings? First of all, there are, of course, the lessons which uh, teach our members how to meditate. And then it's really up to uh, every single member to integrate somehow uh, the teachings of yoga into his or her daily life. You get up in the morning, you take some time 
for meditation. It can be 15 minutes, can be half an hour, it can be an hour, depending uh, on your personal situation. And the same thing you do in the evening. And during the day, you just try as much as possible to live a life in harmony with God's laws. And uh, the organization is simply there to support you in uh, that approach. If you have, for example, questions with the techniques, uh, you can call uh, Self-Realization Fellowship, what we call the Mother Center, our international headquarters in Los Angeles. They are monastics who are trained to help you with the practice of the techniques. You can uh, request um, prayers for yourself, for your loved ones. But ultimately, uh, it is what you do in your own two worlds. But of course, uh, specifically in India, uh, Yogoda Satsanga society does uh, more because there we have schools which we don't have yet here in the West, but Yogananda was interested in them and one of these days they will come too. S schools? Uh, they actually start out from kindergarten going to college. But uh, of yoga or, or no, regular, regular program? No, regular schools ah. and in the, uh, they are recognized by the state and within the curriculum they teach yoga as well. Uh -huh. So we have schools there, then we have medical dispensaries, uh, where uh, needy people getting free medical treatment. Here in the West we are uh, supporting some of the organizations like the West Cross uh, and other things. We do uh, d uh, disaster relief. We uh, support uh, the Indian American College Fund and uh, some others and so forth. So mm -hmm. we, yeah, basically that is it. But the main thing is for us uh, to teach the science of Kriya Yoga, and to uh, help and the worldwide prayer circle. These are the two things. And I would, I would imagine that uh, in, at the temple, you actually uh, invite or is a place where people can go and meditate. Yes. And you, ha you do this two times a day. Are, is this a, a service, a regular uh, service that people can connect with? And uh, at some temples, uh, we have. They are open all day where you can do that. Here, our Berkeley temple, we just moved there. We are still uh, uh, getting all the operations and everything worked out. Normally, uh, the members do their meditations alone. Mm -hmm. But then they come together. We have every Thursday evening uh, from 7 till 7.45, we have a group meditation. And then from 8 to 9, we have an inspirational service at our Berkeley temple. And then on Sunday, that's the same thing we have from 10 to 10.45 um, meditation. Sometimes it's a guided meditation where we lead uh, members through the different steps. Sometimes it's just uh, silent meditation. And then from 11 to 12, there is an inspirational service. And Ramachai Chaimadi and myself, we are the main speakers at the uh, Berkeley Temple. Berkeley is a, is a pretty, um, um, it's a city full of uh, different etnias, uh, full of different people coming from all over the world. Uh, do you find that the people that attend the temple services are more foreigners or Americans or there's no difference or? It's all walks of life, all walks of life. and all ages too. We have a Sunday school, so it starts from the little ones up uh, to uh, how 80, little? 90 years old. How little? Uh, we actually start out Sunday school with three years. Three? But um, we have, if our members, for example, have uh, younger children, we have a parent and infant room, so with video, uh, closed circuit TV, so that they can uh, follow uh, the service and then just take care of the, the little ones, the babies, so <laughs> too. But we start out uh, at three o'clock, uh, at uh, three years at old three years with. Old. Uh, Sunday school. Which is a bit different from other yoga traditions that say mm. that in order to connect with uh, self-consciousness yeah. you have to be at least 12. Some uh, say. That is uh, when we start to teach the techniques. Ah. There is a difference, but there is a great way to teach uh, children 
right from is just to the stories uh, that are in the Bible, the stories of, yeah. from the autobiography of a yogi, the stories from the Mahabharata. I mean, there are all kinds of uh, ways how you Absolutely. can uh, teach uh, children right or wrong just at their level where they can understand it. And in fact, there's been a lot of research conducted and, and uh, some of the most important one then in France by Mission and Flack, who introduced uh, just five minutes of meditation at the beginning of uh, every school day mm -hmm. and then they compare the results mm -hmm. uh, and the learning abilities mm -hmm. of those who were in the program rela mm -hmm. in relationship to those who weren't and it was amazing the results mm -hmm. were amazing the kids were much more focused mm -hmm. concentrated learned in a more f fun way without it considering mm -hmm. a horrible thing they needed mm -hmm. to do so mm -hmm. But even uh, we see these very young children, uh, we teach them meditation just sitting still for 15, 30 seconds. And it's amazing these little children can do it. Because the one thing is, the little children are not that identified with the outer world as we are. They are still a little bit in the astral. And if they tell you yes. actually, look here, it's a point between the eyebrows, there is a spiritual eye. A lot of the children, have no problem with seeing yeah. it right away. Yeah. And they know to focus and the moment they do that, they feel that love, they feel that contentment. So there's no problem. Yeah. It's us, the older ones, who really are so conditioned, who have some trouble, who need the techniques yeah. in order to overcome yeah. our restlessness. Yes. Yes. So now, it works perfectly. Being in Berkeley, uh, and in general, in the United States, we, we say you can find a yoga teacher under every stone <laughs> these <laughs> days. What makes the Self-Realization Fellowship different? Why would someone choose to go to the organization rather than go into another yoga place? I think, again, it's the uh, scientific techniques of Kriya Yoga, which are, as Yogananda said, the uh, Airplane route to God because there are a lot of uh, organizations in India, here in the West, they teach mantra yoga, they teach, uh, but uh, they work. And if you really get uh, deeply into them, uh, you get the same results that you get with Kriya Yoga. Mm -hmm. The only difference is with Kriya Yoga, you can get it a little bit faster. Mm. So that is very the enticing for it's a modern very enticing, world. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but there is no difference. I mean, look at a lot of the Catholic saints in that, that we look at at the uh, Christian Church. They were one with God. They found that supreme happiness within themselves, and they had heard nothing yeah. about yoga. They didn't know anything about techniques. Mm -hmm. How did they do it? Mm -hmm. They just transcended their human consciousness through love and devotion. And that's a very difficult way, but it worked. That's bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga. That's bhakti yoga. Yes, a very important way. Yeah. Mm. What do you think, and perhaps that is it, but uh, what do you think is the most important message that the Self-Realization Fellowship, that Yogananda has for the modern world? If you were to pinpoint one important message, what would that be? Well, it's sort of the purpose of life is to seek God, but that's going to turn off half the people because of the way God is understood. So the purpose of life is to seek supreme happiness inside, which may be a better way to put it. And that's, that's Buddhism Yogananda's main message. And I would say uh, you don't have to run around. There are techniques that you can practice that will, with scientific uh, certitude, give you that happiness, because that's the definition of science. Uh, if you do an experiment, no matter where you repeat it, it always works the same. You always get the same results, because it's based on science. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, where Kriya Yoga comes in, that there is a scientific way to find that happiness within ourselves. It might take a while, you uh, will not get it immediately. It depends a lot on our past actions, karma, 
It brings a lot of our circumstances, but it is within every single one of us. Mm -hmm. How would people get in touch with you if they want to? I mean, there is really uh, this modern world that's a fantastic thing about uh, the internet and everything. If somebody wants to know something about yoga, they just um, dial up in the internet and they will come to Yoga Nanda. They will find our website uh, of the international headquarters, the Mother Center, as we call it. They can. Which is? Uh, which is uh, yogananda-sof.org and there, for example, you can ask for prayers, you can send in questions. We have our Berkeley Temple has its own website here, which is Berkeley Temple in one word, dot org. And there we, uh, it's a contact information and uh, you can ask there for appointment uh, with one of the ministers. You can come to our temple that is on uh, Shattuck Avenue, 3201 uh, uh, Shattuck Avenue, where we have our services on Thursday evening and on uh, Sunday morning. And you see those uh, advertised in our website. There's a calendar, so there are plenty of means to find us <coughs> and learn about us. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, I thank you very much yeah. for coming here today to share the great teachings of Yogananda, but also your personal points in life. And um, I hope to have you again here at the show sometime. My pleasure. Thank you. My guests today were Brother Kalyanananda and Brahmachari Martin, longtime members of the Self-Realization Fellowship, the worldwide nonprofit spiritual organization founded by Paramahansa Yogananda. It has more than uh, 600 temples, retreats, ashrams, and meditation centers around the world, offering all interested seekers the opportunity to come together to experience the power of group meditation, focused retreat programs, inspirational services, and to share the spiritual fellowship. I hope you like our show today. And if you care to let me know, please shoot me an email at antonio at yogiviews.com. I hope to see you the next time. <laughs>